Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial review, we're gonna be having a look at Pixel Film Studio's Projection 2 plugin that allows you to turn a 2D shape into a 3D extruded space in Final Cut Pro 10. You can keyframe this, you can animate it, and we're gonna be having a, a run through of the very basics of how you um, turn a 2D image um, into a 3D extruded shape in Final Cut Pro 10. Now this is a paid for plugin, so watch through the video, see if it's something that you would be interested in purchasing. And if you are, I've got some discount codes from Pixel Film Studios. So if you follow the link below um, to the Projection 2 plugin page and use the discount code PIXELBEN, you'll get a 30% discount if you're one of the first 500 people to use the code. If you're interested in these types of tutorial reviews um, or regular tutorials in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button um, to get an update whenever I post a new video. Otherwise, let's dive in and have a quick look at how we work with the Projection 2 plugin from Pixel Film Studios. So if we jump into Final Cut Pro 10, the first thing we're gonna do before we get started is just go to Window, workspaces and we're gonna reset the default workspace just so we're all looking at the same workspace. So this is basically um, the example we're gonna run through today. We're gonna to turn this still image into a 3D projection um, so it looks like we're actually moving through this tunnel in 3D space. So we'll delete what we've got on the timeline um, here now and we're gonna jump into our generators up at the top left. So this little T and generators button here where we find our titles and generators. Um, if you don't see them, you might need to just click the little arrow. Um, and if you installed the Pixel Film Studios Projection 2 plugin, then this is where you'll, you'll find it. So there's two plugins in here. One is uh, a drop zone with text, um, so we can turn an image into a 3D shape, uh, 3D projection, um, and then add text over it. And we're just going to work with the basic projection tool today to look at how we set things up. So once we drop that down onto the timeline, you'll notice we get these uh, pink dots at the edge of our screen. Um, and I am viewed at 50% here. So if I go to view to fit, you might see them right at the edge of your, your screen here. So we'll come back to 50%. And basically, if you jump up into the inspector, um, and if you don't see the inspector still, then go to window show in workspace and check the inspector and it's under this generators tab so you can see these four tabs for generators video properties color correction and so on and so forth we want to be in that first tab here we have some master controls some drop zone controls and projection controls um, for our image so we're going to drop an image into here so we'll come back up to our library at the top left and we're looking for this green tunnel um, and we need to make sure we've got the generator selected on the timeline and then we can drag this right across into the drop zone source across here. And you'll notice there's in a lot of generators and plugins in Final Cut Pro that there's some drop zones um, in different spots in those plugins and you always find those in the inspector. So now once we've added this we'll need to select this on the timeline and this is now where we can begin to move these pink dots around. So basically we're going to be selecting the end of the tunnel here so we're going to drag these pink dots right down into the end of this tunnel here and then basically um, if we have extra points that we need to add in there maybe we don't have a perfect rectangle or we have a different type of shape if we go to 100 percent we can or maybe 200 percent actually we can zoom in and we can actually hold down the alt key to add in points so you can see my tunnel has these little spots at the end here and basically this is setting up uh, the kind of end of the projection so where we're moving towards when we start to animate our cameras so there's two aspects to this one is the setting up of the projection so the setting up of that projection onto the 3d space and then the other one is the animation which we'll do with our cameras in a minute so now once we've got our projection points in the middle here if we hold down the command key and click in the middle it's going to extrude out from that selection so you can see we don't have the whole tunnel visible um, here so we need to zoom out a little bit we'll come to 75 percent and then we'll just expand out our screen in the middle here so we can see a bit more and if we hold down shift and select all of these outer points you can see they're highlighting white we can now move all of these uh, in one go. So we can't quite see the blue arrow there in the middle, but it is there. And if I just 
pull that across. Then you can see we can click on the blue arrow and by dragging to the right, we can extrude out that selection. So we want to be able to see basically that whole image um, as we had it originally. Um, and if we click in the middle here where the blue arrow is and drag to the right, it will extrude out. You just can't kind of see the blue arrow as you're dragging until you get a bit bigger. So we can move this up and then adjust our points here. Just get the extrusion in the right spot. So I'm deliberately moving all these points at one time. So basically I don't create something that's more complex in 3D space. So that's useful here when we're moving all of these points. So if we just move out a little bit again, we can see we've got some banding at the bottom here. Uh, so we can actually come in and move some of these points individually. So we'll just move some of these points up and across a little bit. And we'll move again, if we hold down shift, we can move these controls out of the way here. So we can access the bottom. So if I hold down shift, I can select both those bottom points and then we can move those up and down. So actually we're not too worried about the banding there because we can move um, our overall position a little bit uh, once we're kind of working with it. So we'll just leave that as is for the moment. We can kind of frame it out when we move the cameras. So that's how to set up our initial projection. Once we've done that, um, we can move to our camera options here. Now one thing to mention here with our camera options is that if we want to render out what we have, um, then we need to move back from our camera to our projection. So we're going to come to camera for the moment. And now with our camera set up, you can see we can reframe what we have on screen with our camera. And basically, we're changing these options of our camera here. So the camera position and the camera rotation. So if I move the position up and change the rotation, eventually I'll be able to frame that original image in the frame. So we're just going to move in a little bit. So drag down and rotate a little. Now we can also modify the plane of view, but I found with like the example that I'm working with, um, it produced a bit of glitching. Um, so just be careful with that or learn a little bit more about the tool as you're kind of working with it. So now you can see, if we come to the beginning here, we'll set a keyframe in a sec, we can move in and out of our tunnel nice and smoothly. So we just wanna frame out that uh, banding at the bottom here. And now if we place our keyframe at the beginning, come to our camera position and rotation, we can add in some keyframes for all these elements. And then we'll come to the end of our clip. And we're just gonna press the left cursor once to come to the last frame of our clip. And then we'll use the zoom in to move into our tunnel. And if we jump back to projection now, back to the beginning of our clip, you can see now that it's going to render out for us. So now that it's rendered out, let's play it through. And you can see we have moved through a tunnel, um, so turning a 2D space into a 3D space. Now the keyframes that we have from our generator, if we right click on our clip here and go to show video animation, we can modify the speed of this um, animation by basically moving these close together. So if I drag these close together and shorten my clip, so we'll trim it down to just over a, around a second and a half, and we'll move this right to the end of the clip. So now when that renders out, it's going to animate a bit quicker and we'll just move these tools out of the way so that we don't see them. So now you can see if we play this through, 
we increase the speed of that animation. So we can increase the speed of the animation, make it slower, make it faster, um, with the regular tools in Final Cut Pro 10. That's the same for most generators that you're working with. You can set up your keyframing um, slowly, or if you've set things up too fast, and then go and modify that um, with the video animation controls um, in the timeline to get your timing just right. So that's a brief overview of the Projection 2 tool. Um, it definitely is a more complicated tool to get used to working with, um, especially if you want to make more complicated projections. And this is a real simple example of kind of moving through a tunnel. But I think you can see in this some of the useful options that you have for turning 2D images into a 3D space. So I'd love to hear how you get on with the projection tool, see some examples of things that you create. Again, if you want the discount code, it's in the description below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.